Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Trowel Time. Um, coming to you from our campus here in Alma, and it's a fall day outside, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. is. Yeah. yeah, feels like fall. So the colors are turning, and the wind is uh, picking up, and it's rainy and cold and windy, and the leaves are falling, and it's it's autumn in Michigan. So. Uh, one of our favorite times of year, actually, because we all get to go back to Lodge. And today, as always with us, are our two companions on the couch, uh, Bill Finkel, our Grand Secretary, past Grand Master, and Tom Braun, our Grand Lecturer. So welcome, guys. Hi, Bob. Good Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Thanks for nice, to, nice to be here. Yeah, did you have a good drive up? Not bad. Not bad yeah. The huh? sun even was shining in Ithaca. The sun always shines in Ithaca. Oh. I think that was a movie. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was right after Moonlight and oh, we're asking Ava or something like that. There you go. So thanks for being here, guys. Uh, kind of an abbreviated trial time this month, but there's a lot of stuff going on. We're just coming back from a whole bunch of degrees that we've been doing. Uh, uh, there are some lodges that are very active and some other ones that are just kind of getting going again after, uh, after the uh, summer break, but uh, things are going good. So, uh, Brother Bill, uh, this time of year, uh, an important time for lodges. They start to consider uh, their new officers yep, for next it's, year. It's uh, most lodges that do an election of officers in November, and uh, I want to just remind everybody to pick the right people for the right job. You bet. Uh, and then lodge progression should be based on talent, not on seniority. In order Absolutely. to get the right person in the job, you need to be able to do that. The right person for the right job. And that is why we have behind the camera, Ben Tigner, uh, who makes, that's right, a smattering of applause. Come from, yes, that was actually two people wow. this time. Our audience has doubled, uh, which is very good. Uh, but uh, we're, we're very glad that Ben's back that's there it. helping us with these programs. So, well, yeah, the right person in the right job, you know, absolutely. and it's always a very important thing. Yeah. What's the best way for us in Lodge then to really know that uh, that the guy you're choosing to go into an officer's position knows the job? Talk to him. Talk to him. Absolutely. Yeah. Interview him. Talk to him. Yeah. Talk Interview to them all. Make sure. Maybe teach him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, if every That's officer right. in every chair actually took the time to teach yeah. the next officer that's going to take that chair, that job, uh, I think you'd have a really good officer line, yeah. right? Yeah. Lodges have a big responsibility in bringing their officers along, yeah. and it's up to them yeah. to uh, to teach them to that next chair. The other thing about elections, I you know, whoever is elected, then everybody has to support them. Yeah. It's a consensus of the lodge that the right. person gets elected, and it's the duty of everybody to support those people. Too often I hear that uh, people complaining about an officer that they talked into running and getting elected. Yeah. And then they said, well, you ain't it's no good. Well, they, That's right. They put That's them right. in, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah I can honestly say that I've heard that myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Form 52s, of course, that's the process that we use for suspensions, non-payment of dues. Those yeah. come in, they have to be into the office, and we're not sure when this will air, so we're gonna assume that it'll be after October 20th, though. And, um, you know, what's what's the biggest, so far, I know that you've gotten some in, what's the biggest the, uh, issue that you can come up with? The that, biggest issue, Bravo, and it's a repeat thing, it's the same every year, could not contact the brother. Yeah. I would suggest to lodges that they send a greetings card to every brother in the lodge, and this will do three things. It will let the brother know that they're thinking about him. Yeah. It would also let the brother have some other communication other than a dues notice. And uh, it will help maintain the attachment to the lodge, let them sure. know that they're still there. Sure. Uh, and, and, and if we do that, we would find out who, what, ba what bad addresses we have early enough to be able to do something before next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you add into the return address on an envelope return uh, receipt requested, um, it'll come back a return uh, envelope to addressee if undeliverable. Those kinds of things add up in the lodge and you'll get your letter back yep. that way if it, if it can't be and, and, uh, done. But, you know, to a lot of them today, they're just not sending out uh, by U.S. Post anymore. It's very expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Postage is up to 60 cents a letter now. And you got a lodge with 100 guys in it. That can add up pretty quick. Um, if a lodge actually took the time to build relationships with its members, all of them, 
especially the ones you don't see. If it did that uh, on a consistent basis, I think that the issues of non-payment of dues would become less significant. I think that they're going down. I don't think that we've had that many come in this year as we've had in the past. It's too early for me to say that. Yeah, it's too early to. But But the cost of that would be, can be done for as little as a dollar a member. It's worth doing. It is. is Well, I'd I'd sure as heck rather get a birthday card than a dues notice. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, make it happen, guys. Yeah. Um, did you want to go through your your trivia? If you want, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. We're going to have a commercial break. We'll come right back, and Bill will fill us in on his Masonic trivia for the month. As I reread the Masonic obligations and the history of Masonry, uh, what's happening here is certainly in line with those teachings. It makes us very proud to be a, a part of the Masonic family at this time. When I was Grand Master many years ago, my wife said, if we live long enough, we're going to be, we're going to go to the Michigan Masonic home. There's a lot of competition out there. And this is a, this is a, it's a business, let's face it. And a lot of businesses out there want our money. And so the Masons are very, very prominent people. They donate a lot of money to a lot of things. And so it's important for me to continue this up. This place it didn't just happen. A lot, of, a lot of Masons and Eastern Star people through the years have found ways to support the, this, this facility. And it is absolutely necessary that they continue to do this. Uh, I just don't know where some of these people would be. You know, I've talked to quite a few people that have moved here from other places, that the other homes that they lived in, and they all praise this place. I can't think of any place else I'd rather be. Welcome back. So we've just had a Commercial break, and Bill, you're going to finish this up, uh, your little portion of our program today, uh, with your Masonic trivia. Masonic trivia. In 1917, the jurisdictions of Georgia and Washington disqualified eunuchs from being Masons, but without using the word eunuch. They simply required candidates, candidates to have their entire organs and be unmutilated. So there it is. Gives a whole new meaning to Retire, prepare, and announce. It does. <laughs> uh, and check. So, yeah. I think we'll probably get censored for that. I one. probably, uh, yeah. 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 Well, I'm old. Yeah. Well, some things no. you just got to cut off. You know, you just can't. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. You just, oh, you just can't. You just can't keep doing stuff like that. Yeah, we're in the toilet now. <laughs> <laughs> So there it is. Yes. Uh, all right. So there's your bit of tri- trivia. I don't know. Um, okay. Tom brought down there, grand lecture, ritual, the whole process down there. That's your ballywick. Uh, yeah. You know, deer hunting is is coming up. Actually, deer it, driving is coming up. It, uh, it, yeah, we're on top of it. I almost killed four of them the other night. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So everybody that's out there driving this time of year in this state, uh, boy. Good luck. Be ready. Uh, yeah, drive something you know, big and heavy. We are into the uh, bow season right now for yeah. deer, and we'll be uh, going into the rifle season here in November. Mm-hmm. So for the brothers that aren't deer hunters, you know, they should check the weekly Masonic news for where degrees are being held. Yeah. Lodges would love to have them come and help. Absolutely. You know, and it'll give them something to do. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you guys are up deer hunting up something, Someplace up north, a lot of lodges up there uh, right. uh, from uh, Gaylord all the way across to have uh, venison dinners That's and have right. breakfasts and stuff for the members. Another so, yeah. great opportunity to sit yeah. with your brothers. Yeah, so, and that's what I do. I, I'm not going to shoot it because I don't want to go through all the problems. Of, well, I, could, I don't think I could hit it if I wanted to, but, um, but I will go eat it. There so, you go. Yeah, all right. Um, how do you know officers are ready to advance? I mean, is there, uh, like some lodges do a step up night or, or uh, call it that? Um, lodges need to take an interest in the brothers that are moving through the line. 
And as Bill mentioned earlier, you know, you should go for the ones that are qualified, not for the ones that have seniority. Mm -hmm. Because your lodge is going to either benefit or will be hurt by that brother sitting in that chair yeah. if you don't do your job up front. Yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, I've suggested to a lot of uh, masters is they should take bits of the ritual and assign them to the chairs or the, the places or the stations. So instead of having Brother Carl, who always does that bit, uh, you know, he might not be here tomorrow. Right. But if it's assigned to the junior deacon, for instance, everybody knows that when they go to that chair or that place, they need to know that bit of ritual, whether it's the tools or whatever it might be. Yeah. And they can start getting their officers attuned to uh, uh, performing some of the ritual. Okay, good idea. You know, and while I've got a lot of uh, men that have a few years uh, on us and we can do some ritual, yeah. you know, when you're a young man, it's a lot easier than it is when you're an older one. Right. So if you're a younger man, you want to learn that ritual. Now's the time to do it. And I had a... I and had it'll, a, it'll change your life if you do. I had a great week. Uh, we now have two junior ritualists in the state That's of Michigan. Great. One last week and one last night in Detroit. So right. uh, I'm really pleased. I'll get that information and share it with Darren. So he can put yeah. it in the weekly news. You were down at uh, Union of Strict Observance Lodge last night. I was. Yeah. 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 And we've been traveling all over. I was in uh, Bay City last night. I was in Marysville last week. There and, you go. Uh, yeah. We've got a lot of good stuff going on. So uh, very, I, very proud of our lives. I was in the chair that loves me last night. Last <laughs> night. Yeah, well, yeah. it's a good place to be. Yeah. <laughs> Monday night, no, I attended that's Golden right. Ark Lodge. So I had a good very night. Golden there. Ark. Yep. Yeah. So that's good. All right. Yeah. Um, so, commercial break, we'll be right back. Are you looking for the latest Masonic apparel, materials, and literature from the craft? Look no more. At michiganmasonicstore.com, you can find everything from hats and shirts to tumblers, blankets, and books. Our shirts come in a range of sizes and with logos and branding custom stitched for the Michigan Masons. Don't wait. Visit michiganmasonicstore.com now. And welcome back. Good to have you with us. So today we're, we're doing something a little bit different. We have a, another uh, guest on our show, although he's kind of off uh, in the background here because we don't have uh, any no, we chairs don't. for him. We don't have a seat for him up here. I've never looked uh, better. <laughs> but uh, so our, our question and answers today uh, are, are being brought to us by Brother Darren Thompson. And Darren, of course, works for the Grand Lodge office. If you're a secretary, you know Darren, um, and if you're from around here, uh, Alma Lodge, secretary, current secretary of Alma Lodge, and just a great guy. Uh, Darren is handling all of our questions and answers for us okay. today so that all of us can kind of participate and take it away, Darren. <laughs> all right, we have three mailbag questions this month. Number one. Can lodges show communications via Zoom for those that are not able to attend for either physical or geographical reasons? I would say no. No. No, you can't. That's right. But they can do a Zoom meeting at a later date and discuss, go over everything that went on at the meeting, Correct. but not the actual meeting. Correct. Okay, so we can do Zoom. Mm -hmm. We can't do, cannot do ritual cannot do really the kind of the private tiled stuff of a lodge. Right. Correct. So if it happened inside of a tiled lodge, we don't show it, but if it's minutes and stuff like that, which are public records anyway, we can certainly use Zoom as a vehicle to update the membership and so forth. Keep members Correct. informed, yeah. 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 It's okay. a great tool. It is, and I think right now it might be a very beneficial one too. Right. Yeah. All right, good question. Does that answer your question there? It does for me, yes. All right. That's, well, that's the best we can do because I don't know who asked. <laughs> a lot of lodges got used to doing Zoom during the pandemic, and it can be a good tool they use to inform brothers who are out of state or can't come to lodge, but just but not during the tiled it, meeting. They didn't use it as a meeting. No. You know, not, they used it as kind of a staying in touch. Right. Making sure that everybody's okay, that kind of thing, right? So yes. I think that we should, should certainly continue that. They could do Facebook Live, right, if it's a closed Facebook group. So there's a lot of things that they could do. Yeah, and at the time, at the time, I think there was a dispensation where they could do enough just to pay the bills and 
Right. Um, right. But yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Okay, question number two. What is the process for requesting a memorial service, and what if your lodge is unable to get enough brothers together to perform that service? Uh, what do they do? Well, the the, uh, the memorial service is supposed to be at the request of a brother, mm -hmm. but most times it's of the, the brother's family that requests. Now, they don't always know that there's such a thing as a Masonic memorial service, so it's okay for a lodge on receiving notice of a, a death of a member to contact the family and ask them if they would like to have one. If, they, if the lodge doesn't have enough people, let us know. Call here, call the Grand Lodge office, call me, and let us know and we will find somebody to do the service. I think something else that uh, lodges can do is visit the funeral homes in their area. Let them know who you are, give them a card. Uh, so, and a contact person, or more than one contact person. Uh, so if, when something comes up, they know who to call. Yeah, I think that that's, that's really a good idea for a lot of reasons. You know, and most of the time, you know, the, the funeral director uh, or the owner of the home is a brother. So yeah, okay. in, in a lot of cases, in these smaller communities, you know, we've already got a good contact with that. It's kind of when you get into the bigger kind of urban areas that it mm -hmm. gets a little lost. Uh, I think that to go to the, uh, the funeral homes, those, those kinds of facilities, and tell them, don't worry about lodge numbers and that kind of thing, just call 800-321-9357. That'll get them up here, and we can then contact that lodge. We can pull up the brothers, the deceased brother's record. We know what lodge he belongs to. We can contact the lodge on their behalf and start that process. So I, I think that that would help eliminate a lot of the confusion, mm -hmm. uh, which has happened. Uh, I personally know of several cases where they called me personally uh, because my name is out there and so forth, yeah. and I have nothing to do with that lodge or that community. <clears throat> but we've been able to get them um, a memorial service. And a lot of times um, the lodges, you know, if it's in the winter, uh, the snowbirds have gone south, and I don't know yeah. if they're gonna do that this year, Florida is kind of a wreck, but um, you know, if, if we're up here, we will get a memorial service put together. Great. We will be there. We will do it. Yeah. Uh, I always like to say, my dad always told me, he said, we raise them up and we lay them down. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's what we'll do. So that's we'll right. make sure that it happens and does, and that it happens well. It, it's the, it's certainly our responsibility to do that. Yeah, just a couple of years ago, Tom and I did one for a brother whose his daughter. It called called here. They couldn't get anybody to do the service, and so Tom and I went and did it. So, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Good question. Thank you, Derek. Okay. Our final question number three is: What if our lodge doesn't have enough attendance in the evening? What can we do about it? So they don't have enough officers to open. What What do they do next? Well, you know, be, being a little creative here, if it. For a special communication, you can move that anytime. You could do it in the morning, you could do it on a Saturday. If you want to do a business meeting, then you need to change your bylaws to reflect moving to a more convenient t day or time that suits most of your members. Making it easy for people to go is the answer. Uh, let's well, face it. Let's think about that though. If you have a lodge who meets on, on Monday night at 7.30, Okay, yeah. and that's a lot of lodges. Uh, two of the ones, two of the four that I belong to, meet on Monday nights at seven thirty. Mm -hmm. And let's say that that lodge is composed mostly of senior people who are retired, and none of them come to that meeting. What would I, what would you do? I would move it to a morning. <laughs> you know, I, I don't <laughs> know why that's so hard yeah. for people to figure wow. out. Move the move the time of the meeting. Say, you know, guys, let's have it at noon. We'll do a lunch. You know, the ladies yeah. can sit out and then have their uh, thing. You know, we'll have yeah. a program or entertainment for them while we go in, have a short little 20 minute meeting or something, and then have lunch. Yeah. I, I, you know, we get so locked into doing Why do you meet on Monday night at 7.30? Because we always yeah, well, have. Well, that's the dumbest yeah. reason to do that. Yeah. You know, if that was the fact, I'd say, well, I'm not going to say that. And so. the other thing, if lodges should be proactive, if they should, they should be having officers meetings. And, you know, they should be talking to their, their members, their officers, are you going to make it or not? You know, make that phone call. Well, That's another thing call they can do. Right. But the situation you just talked about, idea. 
<laughs> we are an aging fraternity. So most of our members... That is true. Most of our members are retired. A lot of them, like you say, don't like to drive at night. So make it easy for them to get yeah. there. I'll Great tell idea. you, every single member we have is aging. Okay. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone. It's just some of us are further down the path yeah. than others. My, yeah. path, my right. path's kind of long, Bob. <laughs> long in the tooth. So, yeah, but but again, if you can't do that or you say, well, we do have some young members and they can't get there during lunch because they're working during the day. Well, that's fine then. Have a special yeah. once a month and just do a do a lunch or a breakfast kind of thing or you know, a donut and coffee. That's, right. that's good for that, too. But stop thinking that we can't do anything differently than what we do. Uh, that's what's killing us is this, this inability to do something new or different that actually takes into consideration the needs and the abilities of our membership. And I think that that's what's important. I agree. All right. Even younger guys, I've gotten a lot of inquiries lately from guys who say I work Monday through Friday, second shift. And so I think, oh, okay, well. Yeah, that's a tough one. We've got two morning lodges in the state. And yeah. Only two. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, I think that if you had something like a noontime lodge in certain areas, that might be very beneficial to the yeah. guys who mm -hmm. could take an hour or something for lunch. Uh, but it might also help those for second shift. Um, so I, we've got it. We've got to say for our membership that we're willing to do what we need to do to make sure that our membership can appreciate and experience the Masonic. Uh, um, Correct. You know, process in a way that makes sense to them absolutely so <clears throat> all right well that was our final mailbag question so if well, you've got one uh, yeah, great Thompson job here just did a great job Woo! for us yeah. yeah if you've got a question We're got a question for a here soon, so. yeah if you've got a question from for an upcoming trial time just email me at dthompson at grandlodgemi.org which is probably on your screen right now and if it isn't, it will be. It's and there's great. reminders in the news and other places to do so. So thank Thanks, you for all who've written in. Thank you. Did a great job for us. All right. So thank everybody, you. get out there and experience Michigan in the fall. It's the best time to be in Michigan. It's my favorite time of year. Uh, we're heading up and out. We're going to go see some of the country and, uh, and have a good time. For those of you, if we don't talk to you before you go out into the woods, I hope that you can slaughter as many of them deer critters as you possibly can uh, just to get them off the road. And Darren is going to talk to us about upcoming events. So we've got a few upcoming events I'd like to remind you about. Uh, the first one is Saturday, November 5th. There will be a reception for Grand Marshal Terry Trout, two T's at the end of his name, at the Dearborn Scottish Rite Center. Um, RSVPs are due by October 24th, so it may be very near or past that time when you're seeing this. Um, but give uh, Ron Sheridan, the Assistant Secretary of Royal Oak Lodge, a call or email him at resheridan at comcast.net and see if you can get a spot there at that uh, celebration for Terry Trout. Recently announced, January 15th, 2023, we are doing a joint group outing with our jurisdiction and the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Michigan for a Pistons versus New York Knicks game at Little Caesars Arena. Again, that's January 15th at 1 p.m., there's three different levels of ticket prices, including an all-you-can-eat option, which they, the Illiches may regret uh, offering that. <laughs> um, all tickets sold through our group will receive a free gift and the opportunity to shoot a free throw on the court after the game. So that'll be a lot of fun. Okay, cool. And then uh, Grand Secretary Finkel mentioned officer elections. It's not too soon to think about annual communication. If you're an incoming Worshipful Master, uh, the dates are May 22nd and 23rd at Soaring Eagle in Mount Pleasant, nice and centrally located. So start thinking now, um, if you're an incoming Worshipful Master, if you're not sure if you can come, start thinking about who could represent your lodge. So we'd love to have every lodge in the state represented this year. Absolutely, good Great. stuff. Thank Thanks, you, Darren. Thanks. We, we wanted to do a Lions game, but uh, just couldn't get anybody to sign up for it, so. <laughs> Great, they never fail to, to amaze us. All right. Everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Welcome, Bob. Good to see you. You too. Yeah, thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Ben, behind the camera. And thanks, Darren, for uh, Q&A and upcoming events. It was a great time. Have, have fun. Go to Lodge. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.